What is this? Oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> it's like, it's like, are you playing a video game right here? What? This hallway? Just the, the slideshow that you had. It does look like Minecraft or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Just all the, all the green. Took me a second. So what do you think? You can't see my apartment anymore. I got a cheap green screen and now it's uh like you can see like my hair and like the edges of my beard are a little green. It's like filtering through just enough to to mess with it. Yeah, I mean, I think you just focused on the details. I mean, I think it looks much, much improved. Yeah, now I can't have anything green on screen. Like if I hold the sprite up, it looks black. <laughs> That's that's pretty dope though. Yeah, I like it. I just I gotta remember not to wear a green shirt or I'll have to like immediately go change. <laughs> but yeah, like uh I've got these screens too. So like you can see that like the the color is like pushing through my beard somehow. Like it's Oh yeah. Like there's supposed to be a way to to fix that but my beard is picking up green from somewhere and reflecting huh. into the camera enough for the computer to to try to wash it out so i don't know i don't know why i would do that That's strange i'm sure there's an article somewhere about it but uh yeah you uh i think we're ready to get started what do you think yeah I'm down. Let's do it. All right. Uh, where is my slideshow? There it is. Uh, I think we left off with, uh, I think it was Aang and Aang is in Omashu in the prison, right? That's where... Yeah, he just got arrested. Yeah, he just got. Or taken. Yeah, taken or whatever. And uh, uh, these little avatars are going to get in my way. <clears throat> but, the, I mean, Iroh is dropping some dropping some wisdom. And I think he says something about, like, uh, Zuko is more, more complex than you think he is or something to that effect. Yeah, I feel like uh, in this episode or maybe just in... in Omashu in general I started to change my opinion about Iroh in the first episode I didn't like him something fell off it was it's not him as a person it's just I don't feel I didn't feel like he is the Iroh that I wanted to see then into episode two and three you know I feel like in a, in a small way he kind of starts to grow on you a little bit uh, but I feel like after or at Omashu was kind of the point that I got hooked, hook, line, and sinker, where uh, I was like, this is my dude. Like, it, it, you just start seeing more of that true Iroh character come out and the wisdom that he has and the conversation he had with uh, Aang and then some, you know, how he even ended up there where, you know, he was causing a distraction so Zuko could escape. Um you know, and and shortly after this, uh, you know, we're gonna get into that episode here in a bit. Whenever he gets taken um, as a prisoner down the line, uh, I just saw a lot of character growth. Maybe that's the wrong word. Maybe I just, uh, I guess, I just really liked what they did with this character. I think I mostly agree with you, and I and my like my thought about why. Like, why he felt off was probably because it was just we're not used to the live actor. And my secondary theory on that is that this actor was n maybe not familiar with Iroh as the character that he is in the animated show. And so, like, he's learning more about his self, like the character he portrays while they're filming. And so he gradually gets a feel for that that you know the the way that Iroh is in the cartoon and he like he gets more comfortable in the role 
and then starts to starts to like I feel like uh, season two Iroh is gonna be a lot better because he's gonna the actor's gonna have a lot more context for the character that he's playing. I, I mean I don't I don't really know. It's just kind of like a the theory I guess. Ah, those are all fair points. I, I think for me personally, it was the voice. And, you know, you you know, just with dealing with people, first impressions are everything. Mm -hmm. And my first impression when I heard him talk was, you're not Iroh. So, yeah. you know, whatever, it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, you're not the dude I'm looking for. Uh, and then as you, you know, it's not like you can press a button on your remote and change who plays them. So you kind of have to deal with it. And he gets more time on screen in those moments where Iro does Iro things. That's when it started to grow for me. But I think that, you know, you make some great points as well. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, it's really just that I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. It feels right, but, you know, I, nobody was there other than them for the production. So, I mean, I, I think you're 100% right that the voice just... Like that's not Iroh, and then as maybe it's because we got used to the character on screen. Maybe it has nothing to do with him. I don't, I don't know. Like when I look for yeah, it, I mean, when I look for it on the rewatch, it feels okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he just didn't have enough time on screen. Um, he is his lines were very few in the beginning if I'm not mistaken. And there wasn't very much uh, character depth yet. So, I mean, you know, you didn't really get to see that relationship form uh, like you do later in the season, which I think they do a terrific job. For me, my absolute favorite part of this live action was Zuko and Uncle Iroh and watching them have that bond and actually seeing it from a different perspective than the animated series. Uh, the live yeah. action put a little bit of a twist on it, showed it in a different light, and I absolutely loved it. Bold, bold opinion there. Not sure how that's gonna go, but we'll have to see. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't I, care I mean, what anybody else is. For for what it's worth, I agree with you so much that when I built these slides for these three episodes, the uh, most of the the uh, episode six slides are all all uh Iroh and Zuko like I got almost Good. nothing with uh Aang going to going to go rescue uh everybody from from Ko like I got almost nothing from them I, it's all all Iroh and Zuko those episodes were a little weak man I mean I think I think the end of Omashu was really nice I enjoyed that uh because it all came to a head yeah but I mean if you're looking at individual arcs in, in the live action if i'm looking at the live action as a whole episodes four through six were were okay they were good right not shitting on the show or anything but individually ang and katara and, and Sokka, their their arcs were kind of weak uh, right. and i feel like the highlight of those episodes or like you said the only thing that you can take away is that is when Iroh and Zuko really started to show that deep bond that they had. And they also were put in a position where they actually had to grow that, continue to grow that bond. They're, they're all each other half. Right. Officially at that point, you know? Yeah. I think we get to see quite a bit of that. Uh, and then it all comes to kind of like a head at uh, episode seven or eight or whatever it is when they, when Zuko gets in the boat, now they're really like on their own, but like leading up yeah. to that, you can kind of see that they're being isolated um, by by the Fire Nation and and Azula. <laughs> um, oh, definitely. You know, I th this next slide I have is uh, Sokka and the Mechanist or whatever I don't know his name, but Sai. Yeah, Sai. Yeah, so like this, this is uh, I I try to get a I try to get a good slide. I mean, there's this isn't like breaking it down like some kind of uh, complex, some kind of complex, uh, you know, theory crafting like we do for Will of Time, whether it's the books or the shows. This is a well-known series, just transformed into live action. 
And, uh... uh that's gross. That's <laughs> the same thing I thought. Uh... Sweet. And that guy's blocked. You can get out of here, bro. We'll take the subby, though. We'll take the subby. I yeah, appreciate it. Amazing. That was not what I was expecting to happen today, but here we are. Yeah, when I was streaming Call of Duty, I would get a ton of those. Really? I think, uh, yeah, I think they've, uh, I mean, I don't know. From just what I could see on our streams, I think that they've kind of slowed down, but it was like spam emails at one point when I'd play Call of Duty. If I was to stream for two hours, I, I would get anywhere from three to seven of those per stream. Hmm. That's amazing. I mean, I, but I they guess... never followed. Yeah, I'll have, to, in, I'll have to get a uh, like streamer bot or something and put some keywords in there to filter out people that are doing that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not interested in any of that. If I wanted to pay for viewers, I would have done that at the beginning of the month. <laughs> um. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. That guy messed me up. Forgot what I was talking about. Um, I mean, but yeah, th I was trying to get a... What I meant to say was I was trying to get like a, a a shot of like the... I think they show like the beginnings of the air balloon or something here. But ended up not being that important. I mean, we all know what's, what happens, right? Hmm. We there's no There's no mystery to it. Um, but anyways, I, this, this scene felt forced. I'm probably just going to skip it <laughs> with the young, young boomy. Oh um, yeah. Like they only put that in there to hear him laugh and snort so that Aang could recognize him. Like they, yeah. didn't, they didn't show him do what they did in the animated series. Like where they, um, ride around on the, the carts or whatever. That I think they do in the, yeah. in the animated, so just felt they had to shoehorn it in to make make sure that they check the box right. For sure. Um, I took this screenshot because, like, I forgot that Boomy's essentially like cuckoo, and uh, he's like ordering this bizarre freaking tea, and when they bring it to him, he's like, "Who ordered this?" Yeah, he's he's got some Joe Byron moments, for sure. Yeah. And uh, were you were you unimpressed whenever he ripped his shirt off? Because I was waiting. I was wondering, did this dude work out? Did he bulk up? Did he go on the Superman regiment, where you know he's just like crushing, like creatine and and GH pills, trying to uh, get buff. I I knew it wasn't going to be as dramatic as the animated series and I think my I mean I I think my uh reaction was kind of middle middle of the road. I wasn't like super impressed, but I also wasn't like too upset about it. Oh, that's fair. It, it's not a big detail. I just was wondering cuz when you watch the show, you know, he's all hunched over, he's old, he's senile, and then he rips off his freaking robe, and this old man is just ripped to hell. And yeah. I was like, I wonder I wonder if they're going to be accurate to that. And I mean, you know, he was fit, but, uh, it, you know, I was it would have been more. It would have been funny if they had gotten, like, a pro wrestler's body yeah. and just CGI'd his head on there or something. It would have been funny, been, you know? Yeah. You know, if they could have pulled it off, it would have been even more amazing. But they didn't. They didn't necessarily have to do that. I I thought it was all right. It's middle of the pack, I guess. Um, I, not really sure how much you want to talk about this episode specifically because I think we talked about it last time. They, they kind of, 
don't they like shoehorn quite a few things into these episodes that technically happen somewhere else? Like, this is Jet in Omashu or is he in Ba Sing Se? No. He's, I think, on the road to Ba Sing Se. Okay. And I don't then... even think he's in. <clears throat> I could be wrong. I don't think he's in the city of Ba Sing Se, <laughs> but maybe he is. Uh, and then, uh, like, the the hippies in the cave. Yeah. Like, I don't think they were there either, were they? I don't remember. Uh, no. Pretty sure they were on the road to Bossing Se. I feel like they did a lot of things that they should have done in Bossing Se. Uh, in Omashu. I mean that that makes sense. I mean I I don't necessarily agree with what they did, but I think you kind of hit on it the last time we talked. Is that you have an hour, not three twenty minute episodes, so it would be hard for them to uh, get to a place, finish their storyline for that place, and then transition essentially three times for a one hour episode. It would feel, it would feel off, I think. It'd feel rushed. Yeah. It'd feel super rushed. So, yeah, yeah I, I get it. You know, you got to take some liberties, and that's why... In the middle of this season, I feel like episodes four through seven aren't out the park. I feel like the ending of the season was terrific. And I feel like episode two, uh, where they go to, I'm blanking on the name of the island right now, Kiyoshi Island. Yeah. I think that episode was knocked out the park. Uh, but they took an hour and like did like a 20 or 30 minute episode i think they spent just a little bit more than one episode uh there and going through that storyline so yeah and you, you just can't do that for every episode you're going to run out of time so yeah you, you got to take some liberties you got to crunch some some I, stories together i wish dude in a perfect world with unlimited budget could you imagine turning each 20 minute episode into an hour that i mean there's i think there's like 24 episodes imagine 24 hours of episode of season one that'd be great yeah imagine and, if they did that chapter by chapter with will of time bro i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm just kidding that would uh <laughs> that would take forever i think there's like 60 something chapters in book one <laughs> yeah that would be intense <laughs> i'd probably get burned out of the show to be quite honest be like, i'll just go read the book perfect Looking forward to that, by the way. We talked about it earlier. They like finished filming. Yeah, man. Up uh, season three, I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, I took this screenshot. I'm just going back to the. I was looking at the slide, trying to finish my thought, uh, and uh, got distracted. The. This screenshot is like when they're in the cave, and this is like my only, my only decent example it's not even a good one it's like a decent example of like animated katara and Sokka fighting yeah like i don't think we hear much about katara's mother and um i know they, you're glad about that they don't they don't fight a lot either <laughs> when in the animated show they're like constantly at each other's throats yeah, well, I felt like we addressed that. Maybe it was in the last episode or the one before. Yeah. Um, the the thing that fills off is just the banter between them two is just not there. But yeah, it, this is the one spot I feel like it was. Yeah, it I felt pretty good. They were by themselves. They were fighting, and it. I think it technically drove the plot, but it felt a little off because you don't you didn't see any of that leading up to this episode. Yeah, that's true. So. Uh, I think it could be like uh, because they ma upped the maturity level of everybody. So like more mature children don't necessarily fight when they're in front of somebody else, but they do fight when they're by themselves. <laughs> so kind of yeah, makes kind of makes sense. Uh, I was not expecting this scene with uh, Myro at the funeral. That's that's what I mean by I like that they took a different twist because, 
you get the opportunity to see Zuko console Iroh at one of his darkest moments in his life. You know, he is on a siege. He's, you know, passed up the, the throne to his younger brother. Um, yeah, he's at that siege of uh, Omashu and ends up losing his son, decides to cancel it or, or withdraw retreat and, uh, you know, kind of goes into mourning. And right. I feel like that is rock bottom for, for Iroh as a person. Um, and I wouldn't say he's breaking, but you see him struggling really bad and, you know, maybe feels alone in a way, you know, cause he's not the, he's not the emperor. He's not, you know, his son's gone, his wife's gone. Uh, who does he have left? And then you see, you know, Zuko in the midst of everything, everybody's just so proper about everything and, and at a distance, but Zuko Zuko's like, I'm not playing by these rules. I'm not, you know, screw the respect, screw this, you know, what I should do, bow and move on. No, I'm going to sit right next to you. I'm with you in this. We're family. Um, and that was a really great moment to see. I I agree. I mean, uh, this, this one was, this was tough. I think this is the same episode where they kind of show him a uh, point where they play the music. In the Leaves background. From the vine. Yeah. I think they play it in the background oh, yeah. or something. Ugh. Yeah, it brings up some uh some past traumas. How how dare you make me feel things? Yeah. Uh but yeah, you can see like pre scar pre scar Zuko and uh you know, I thought those scenes were done really well. I don't think we saw anything like this in the animated series. I, I don't remember. No. So this was good, kind of like, kind of like the other show. Anytime they can like add context or do like an interpretation of something that wasn't in the original format, but is still true to, like I I could see this have happened in that world. So I I like it. Honestly, I think that this did a better job than the show did the animated series of yeah. adding depth and context to their relationship and what happened during that time. Yeah. So many people get upset, like you said, you know, whenever it's not one for one or it's not exactly how it happened. And this is a prime example of me loving the liberties and and what they did with something. Right. I like it when they add context, but are remaining faithful to the material like you and I could both see this having happened. hundred percent. Yeah, that's. Uh. I think we're moving at a pretty slow pace, so I'm gonna yeah, let's pick gonna, it up. Yeah, we got uh, Sokka and Katara being. I think they got saved by the Badgers mm -hmm. with with the power of love. That's right. And then uh, love conquers all. Yeah, I, I meant to get a. I did mean to get a picture of uh, Boomy, the way he was in the cartoon, and I just forgot to go grab it. Uh, but yeah, you can see he's not nearly as ripped. He's in, he's in shape, but he's yeah. not nearly as ripped as as he was in the cartoon. I think he was like, uh, like freakishly, like jacked in the cartoon. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely not a big deal. But it was just a little note that stuck out to me because when you think of Boomy the character, he is a swole ass old man. <laughs> yeah, swole like a tick. Yeah, he's huge. Um, and then, uh, oh, this is, yeah, is, I think Zuko is, like, this is breaking him out of, like, the labor camp train or whatever. They're, like, traveling from the prison to, like, a mine or a labor yeah. camp or something. And uh, Iroh gets hurt, and, like, a lot of this stuff is, you know, it all this was good. It just it didn't it didn't quite feel the same. So I just kind of for me it did. Did it specifically the Iro arc? Uh, just like watching him get shipped out by the uh, Earthbenders and them kind of take their pop shots at him because of you know 
okay he, he wrong them in many ways you know and and i enjoyed that and then you know watching that and then seeing zuko come save him uh i appreciate that but also you see just more of iroh's character uh in that and how he's handling that um how he doesn't want anybody to get hurt you know he's accepted what you know the reality of what it was it's war you know right it, everybody's lost something those those guys don't know that he lost his son or, or i can't remember if they do or not um but I, I think at some point they were trying to say that uh like they had lost something and or they had lost someone and he was like you know we all lost um but i i feel like that just added a little bit of depth so i really enjoyed that arc like i said i don't want to keep harping on it we can move on no nah, i mean I, it it is good i think he says something like nobody wins in war or something like yeah something yeah. like that 